Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us for Disaster Recovery to the Public Cloud, Recovering in Azure and AWS with Zerto. My name is James Watts, and I'm joined today by two presenters. We have Chris Rogers, who's the Cloud Architect from Zerto, and he's going to be talking through uh, the technology itself and how Zerto replicates and recovers in Azure and AWS. Uh, and then Chris is going to be handing over to our own Steve Hicks, uh, and he's going to be talking about some of our real world experience of delivering these services in Azure and AWS, uh, how we replicate and how we recover, uh, and how that differs from how we've previously done things, uh, replicating into our own VMware vCloud data centers. So before I hand over to, uh, to Chris, I'm just going to kick off with a couple of quick bits uh, of, of housekeeping. Um, so we are scheduled for 30 minutes today. And that does include a short period of time for some questions. So if you have any questions, type them in on the right hand side uh, and I'll put it to the guys at the end of this session. Uh, and then importantly, we are recording this. So uh, Chris in particular has some quite detailed slides that do bear a, a, a kind of second look. Um, so don't feel you need to scribble everything down. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make these available so you can, can run through those. Uh, and then lastly, we are holding a, a small prize draw today. So we have a, uh, studio quality USB microphone and a HD webcam to upgrade your home working setup now uh, a kind of year into some degree of, of, of working from home. Um, so stick around and we'll be doing that draw at the end of the session today. Uh, so with that all said, uh, thank you, Chris. I'll hand over, I'll hand over to you. Perfect. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Um, so as, as uh, James just said there, I'm Chris Rogers. I'm a cloud solution architect working for Zerto. Um, so just here to talk briefly about kind of yeah, Zerto and, and Azure and AWS. I just kind of want to go into to the Zerto platform um, to start with. And so we do disaster recovery. That's what we're known for um, in the industry. But also our, our use cases extend out into all the things you can see on, to the, on the slide now. So the continuous backup, long-term retention, data mobility and migrations, test and dev, and security and compliance. And then all of those use cases are kind of underpinned by our continuous data protection. So at Zerto, um, CDP isn't bolted on, it's not an additional feature. It's at the core of everything we do. So when we're doing backup or long-term retention or migrations, continuous data protection is at the heart of everything we do. So just bear that in mind when we talk through presentations um, and, and more slides in the future. So I just want to take a look at the, at the key benefits here. So we've got flexibility being one. I think when we talk about cloud and Azure and AWS, people are key to have that flexibility. That's what cloud's all about. So we have no vendor, vendor locking. We don't, we're not owned by any of the big providers in the world. We're, we're an independent software provider. So we give you the flexibility to move and migrate data and uh, recover your data into any cloud, whichever way you want to do that. So it's either from VMware into Azure and then back, crucially back out again. And the next thing I think is really crucial is, is software only. I don't think anyone's cloud strategy should, in, should include um, landing more tin on the ground um, for, for appliances. I don't think that's a great, um, great cloud strategy moving forward. So I think having software-only architecture is another benefit of us. And then simplicity and scalability, I think they go hand in hand. If something is simple to use um, and it scales really well, I think that's the cloud experience that people are after. The simple user interfaces, the simple experiences, but also the scale out architecture for the cloud. And then mobility and orchestration, being able to migrate the virtual machines into the cloud and then crucially back out again if you need to. And then orchestration, being able to automate all of those workflows, um, again, providing that simplicity um, in and out of the cloud. So briefly, we're going to look at the, the architecture. It's a very simple architecture with Zerto. We're going to go into the, into the cloud side in a bit more detail in the next few slides. But first of all, we want to look, have a look at the on-premise side. So we kind of have two components in Zerto, and unfortunately, everything begins with a Z at Zerto, so we have a lot of acronyms. So we have a Zerto Virtual Manager. So this is essentially the the management component of the Zerto interface. So this is where you would log into, where the orchestration automation flows from. And then on each hypervisor host, we have a virtual replication appliance. And these are the guys that actually take the data and move it into the cloud for you. So they're kind of the worker notes, if you will. Um, we have each one of those on each hypervisor host. They're very small Linux appliances, you know, probably one CPU and three gig of RAM by default. And as you can see, we have an own multi-cloud architecture on the right-hand side. So we can replicate up to three different locations at the same time. That, and they can all be different locations as well. So I've, I've put four locations um, on here, so you could pick any of these, but also other ones are available. So you could have an on-premise situation, for instance, 
you could have a data barracks data center with vCloud Direct, you could have AWS and Azure at the same time, completely up to you, completely agnostic, and it works with exactly the same setup from source. So now if we look at the, the Zert Server and Azure architecture, we start to see that the production side is exactly the same, as you'd expect, so the PMs and VRAs. And then as we look at the Azure site, we have a, a Zerto Cloud appliance. So instead of a ZVN and VRA, we have a Zerto Cloud appliance, which is available from the marketplace in Azure. And what we do is we're taking the data that we store in data stores on premise and moving that into the cloud. So as I said before, we're doing that on a continuous protection basis. So rather than doing it on scheduled every hour or every two hours or even every five minutes, we're doing it on a continuous basis. So we're going to be probably about between five and 10 seconds behind production. So that'd be your RPO be between five and ten seconds realistically and we store that those uh, that data in two formats so it's in, in blob uh, storage so the cheapest place we can pretty much store data in Azure so we have two formats so the replica disks are stored in page blobs and the journal files are stored in block blobs um, and those are the two different storage areas we use and then when we look at the scale architecture of Zerto so in in a uh, on-premise we have VRAs to, to scale out from Sorry, James, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so, so it's on premise we have the ZVM, ZVM, the VRAs, and the VRAs scale out with the amount of um, workloads you have. So the more hosts you have, the more uh, VRAs you have. Inside Azure, obviously, we don't have access to the underlying hosts and infrastructure, so we use the APIs. But that provides us with a scale challenge. We don't scale like we did on premise because we can't just add more and more ZCAs. That would be pretty inefficient to run all those VMs in, in Azure all the time. So what we've done is we kind of re-architected everything to use cloud native scalar architecture. So we have a single ZCA, which is again, the management console is, is what we'd expect. And then every, all the data goes into Azure queues. So we're using again, so that cloud native, um, cloud native functionality in Azure queues to, to store that data. And then what we do is we spin out Azure VM scale set workers. So when the load increases on the queue, in the, yeah, in the Azure queue, we add more scale set VMs to process that workload quicker. And then when with the, the Azure queue isn't quite as busy, we'll reduce those scale sets down. So that's giving you increased efficiency because we're not running big clunky appliances 100% of the time. Therefore, that's going to reduce some cost. But also that gives us that, that elastic architecture you'd expect with cloud, being able to scale out the performance we need to, but also scale it back in when we don't need to. And that works for failover and for continuous replication as well. That gives us nice quick RPOs and RTOs. And if we look at the, the failover process into Azure, so the first step is we clone the replica page blobs. So we have a page blob already stored there, and we're going to do an instant clone of those into a new uh, page blob storage. And then second one, we read the journal data from the block blobs. So those are read by the worker nodes, so the same worker nodes we're using for replication, we're using now for failover. So we're reading that from the block blobs into the worker node. Then we're writing from the worker node back down into the clone page blob. So essentially what we're doing there is creating an exact point in time from the checkpoint you've chosen by combining the replica disk and the journal disk to an exact point in time that you've chosen when you want to fail over. After that, we then convert that uh, page blob into a VHD and we round up the size to whole megabytes. And the fifth thing we do is then import the VHDs as managed disks. So if you're using um, IaaS, you need to do the managed disks. We're going to import those VHDs as managed disks. The last thing we do is we create the VM as specified in the VPG config, and we attach those managed disks from the point in time you told us to. So that is the, the failover process of what we do. So the reason we do all this process, obviously, we want to store data in the most efficient way as possible, especially with disaster recovery. We want to be storing things in, in the cheapest possible storage we can. We don't want to be storing things in managed disk the whole time because 99% of the time we're not going to be using that data. It's going to be idle. So we store in page blobs and block blobs to, to minimize that cost. Then we do this what we call a promotion process. So we promote it from blob storage into managed disk storage behind the scenes for you. But again, this is all orchestrated and automated for you. So when you click the fellow button, this all happens behind the scenes. So you can see any of this comes first. So now if we look at the Zerto and AWS architecture, as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same, ZVMs and VRAs on premise. And a slight difference when we come into the AWS area is we still have the ZCA, again, available from the marketplace. But instead of block, blob, and page blob, we store everything in S3 buckets. And they, they're stored in the same S3 buckets for replica and compressed journal files. So the, the format's exactly the same, replica disks and compressed journal files. But instead of page blob and block blob, we put them into S3 buckets. 
And again, with Scatter imports, we're doing exactly the same thing as we did in the Azure architecture with uh, Z import instances. So these are again scale out import nodes, which enables faster recovery. And again, with using that horizontal scaling for increased efficiencies and reduced cost, rather than having loads of big clunky cloud appliances running that are going to cost a lot of money to run 24 by 7. Then if we look at the failover from um, like a VMware instance into Amazon EC2 in this instance here, again, you'll see it's relatively similar. So the first thing we're going to do is read the bucket from the S3 journal. Sorry, read the journal from the S3 bucket. So essentially we're using those importer instances to read those journals from the S3 bucket. And then we're writing that data directly into the EBS disk. Once there, we're detaching that disk from the Z importer, and then we create the EC2 instance and attach the disk to it. So it's quite a simple process in this time. So we're taking the S3 bucket via the Z importer and attach it into the, the um, DBS volume and attach that um, EBS disk to the EC2 instance that you've created, again, using the VPG specs that were that specified earlier. So now we're just going to move into the kind of the, the benefits of Zerto. So I said, near synchronous replication. So we're going to be seconds behind your your uh, your production instance. So when we're talking about disaster recovery, the RPO and RTO is really what's going to be your key SLA. So how quickly you can recover and how much data loss you're going to have during that recovery period. So in Zerto, we're going to be get you up and running in minutes, and we're going to have an RPO of seconds. So pretty much going to be the quickest in the marketplace, I would imagine. And a few things here. So we don't schedule anything. As I said before, it's all done on a continuous basis. There's no snapshot and no agents. This is all done through the hypervisor of source. So again, we don't have to worry about any production impact on the source environment because we're not having any production impact. We're not taking snapshots and there's no agents installed in any of the guest OSs either. That makes this hardware and storage agnostic. You could be running anything um, from the production site, whether that is VMware or Hyper-V. We do on the fly um, conversion as well. So you don't have to be on Hyper-V to go to Azure. And you don't have to be on KVM or whatever to go to AWS. We'll go from VMware to Azure, and then we can come back out again. We do that, um, do that conversion on the fly for you. And if we look at the granular point in time, this is what I'm talking about, about recovery point objective. We're going to be seconds behind um, your production environment, but not only the latest point in time. So normally in about a 24-hour period, we're going to have over a 1,000 points of time in that journal for you to recover from. So that gives you the real granularity of being able to recover from the exact point in time you want to, rather than just last night's backup or the incremental backup four hours ago. We're going to be able to pinpoint, you know, actually it was at 10 a.m. this morning, so I'm going to go back to 9.59, 55 seconds, and that's the point in time I want my VM to recover to, rather than being, this is the only point in time I have, we're giving that choice and flexibility. And it's not just for whole DR. We can do individual applications, individual VMs, a full site if you want to, but also individual files from those, from those from that journal as well. So it's not just for the use case of full DR when something's blown up or power's been cut completely, we can do those more operational recovery use cases as well, so an individual file restore, an individual directory restore as well. And then we look at the recover, how we recover applications. And I think this is a key point to RTO. Normally when we're doing data protection, we would take an application, in this instance, a four-tier application, so a DB server, file server, app server, and a web server. We would normally take those component parts and recover those individually. So we'd be taking a snapshot or replicating those individually and then recovering them and having to get them all in sync on the side once we've recovered those individually. Whereas Zerto, what we do is we put everything into a logical group called a, a virtual protection group. And what we do is every five to 10 seconds, as this, this picture shows, we're taking a consistent point in time checkpoint across all of those servers at exactly the same point in time. So when it comes to recovery, we're recovering every single uh, VM in this application to the same point in time. So everything's going to be time consistent. So we haven't got anything out of sync to so the database server is going to be in sync with the file server, which is in sync with the app server, which is going to be in sync with the web server. So you haven't got to do that strange thing. You have to reboot things in different orders or do redo logs or try and roll something back or something forward because something's out of sync. Everything's going to be from exactly the same point in time. And let me look at unlock it cloud agility. As I said earlier, we're not owned or, or operated or anything like that or have a preference for any of the cloud providers or, or hardware providers or any, any hypervisor provider. So we work across the board. We work with you know, the Azure VMware solution, the VMware the Google Cloud Engine, AWS, IBM Cloud, the VMware and Oracle Cloud, or MSPs, VMware Hyper-V. So we don't mind where you're replicating to or from. So in this instance, we give you that real cloud agility. You can run some workloads in the best places, and if that doesn't work out for you or you need to move, we can help you migrate that data across as well. 
that means it's giving you true, true flexibility and cloud agility. We're not being locked into tools. We're not being locked into particular vendors, which I think is what cloud is all about. And then I said earlier, built-in orchestration. So, you know, what, what does orchestration mean? So, you know, enabling someone to take up a DR plan with four or five clicks. So in Zerto, we can be fared over fully into Azure, AWS, or public cloud with five clicks of, of, of a UI meaning that once everything's set up, you can hand that over to whoever you need to, and your DR plan goes from potentially a 15, 20 page run book down to two or three page run books. It's very simple. And all of that config built in ahead of time and can be tested without disruption to production as well, which means you can test your DR as many times as you like without impact to production workloads, which means we can test more than just that once a year like we normally do. We can test every week if we really wanted to. I said, I've got loads of stuff on these slides, so I'm not going to go through them. You will get a copy of those slides. So I just want to finish with two things. So we're going to support the new the Azure VMware solution. So if you feel like you want to move to public cloud, but you haven't got the, you know, the, the ability or the, the skill set to, to run uh, in native Azure, we have you know the, the VMware Azure solution, which is essentially running VMware on Azure, very simply. And then coming soon, again, this is going to be in, in private preview later this year, we're going to have um, in the cloud disaster recovery for AWS which will mean if you've got um, EC2 instance running in a, a production region in, in AWS, we'll be able to replicate those into another region for you in AWS. This is really built for scale as well, so kind of large, and as we said before, scale and simplicity, thousands of VM terabytes of data, that enterprise level um, replication solution that, that Zerto is known for. So I think that's my last slide, so thanks everyone for listening. If you have any questions, put them in the chat later on, and I'm going to pass over to Steve. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, so my name is Steve Fix. I'm a senior infrastructure specialist at Data Barracks, and we are a service provider who specialise in business continuity as a service, disaster recovery as a service, backup as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Um, my role at Data Barracks is uh, I'm not a sales rep. I'm an engineer. Uh, I've personally configured multiple customers' disaster recovery solutions, going from our on-premise uh, to public cloud. The majority of these tend to use Azure, and the majority of these customers do use Zerto as the tool to get there. Um, I've been at Data Barracks for a few years now, about three and a half years, and it was shortly after I joined, maybe three and a half years, uh, sorry, three years ago, that we did our first disaster recovery a customer into Azure. Um, before, prior to that, almost all of our customers were going into our own private data center. Um, but now what we are seeing is that more customers are using public cloud for their disaster recovery. Um, the majority of these new customers are using Azure. We have some using AWS, but the majority are Azure, so my presentation is slightly skewed toward the, uh, towards the Azure side of things. Uh, and the majority of these new customers will use Zerto as the tool to get there, so that's what I'll be talking about mainly as well. Um, and what I'm going to discuss with you is, over the last few years of doing multiple customers into uh, public cloud, what have we learned along the way? Um, what sort of lessons are there to be learned? Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is, is compatibility. Um, just because your servers work fine in VMware or even Hyper-V and they're Windows machines, it doesn't necessarily translate that they're going to work absolutely perfectly in um, public cloud or in Azure specifically. Um, some operating systems uh, aren't compatible or aren't supported. So Server 2003 being quite an older version won't be supported by Microsoft. Um, some older versions of Linux some appliances like Netscalers, whilst they work in VMware or even Hyper-V, don't translate in a, in a sort of copy and paste type scenario uh, into Azure. Um, also the boot modes, so both BIOS and UEFI boot modes are supported, but there are weird combinations. So if you have Server 2008 R2, for example, and it's UEFI boot mode, that isn't supported in Azure, despite it being a Windows operating system. Um, there are other caveats around disk sizes, so VMware can support very, very large VMDKs and Hyper-V as well, large disks, whereas with Azure, um, you're limited to eight terabytes for a data disk uh, to, to, for your disaster recovery up there, and two terabytes for an operating system disk. And there's lots of little caveats like this when, you, when you're looking at changing hypervisors. Um, and you can look online and see what all these caveats are, and the same for AWS, there's caveats there as well. And you can find out online what they are and, and maybe compare uh, what have I got in um, my production site compared to these, to these caveats and will I be um, compatible? That will take quite a long time. Um, so thankfully, Microsoft have developed a tool called the Azure Site Recovery Deployment Planner. Now, it's designed for Azure Site Recovery, but what it does is it will analyze your environment and all of your virtual machines, and it will 
look at them for compatibility. So it will check uh, their operating system, their boot mode, um, their disk sizes, uh, and, and it will even look at their data rate of change. So it will, it will give us ideas on what instance type you want to have in Azure, as well as what storage type, whether you're going to be on hard drives or SSDs. And that gives you an idea around costing as well. And then it produces a really nice report, like you can see in the screenshot here, uh, which tells us which of your machines are compatible, which are incompatible and why. And then as a service provider, we help our new customers. We always run this deployment planner where we can, and then we work through any, any caveats there might be and work out what we can do uh, to get around those. There is also a Azerto planner, which can do a do similar thing. I'll let Chris touch on that if he, if he doesn't mind uh, for a second explaining what that does. Yeah, absolutely. So the Zerto plan is more around um, exactly what it says, planning for, for Zerto usage um, inside of Azure or AWS. So it's going to look at look at um, historic stats and then look and tell you for you know, what bandwidth requirements you need to replicate the VMs, what the journal sizes are going to be for you know one day or five days worth of journal, so you can plan for storage costs in Azure, and also what the um, replica disk size is going to be. So normally when I'm doing deployments, I'll combine both the tools together to give you exactly what um, Steve said around, you know, the, the issues or the compatibility problems, and then plug all my VMs into the Zerto plan to then look at the, the costings and, and deployment, so how much space I'm going to need um, and what bandwidth I'm going to need as well. Thanks, Chris. Um, so moving on to my next slide, um, whilst there are a lot of caveats with um, migrating to, to public cloud, there are less now than there used to be. Uh, Azure in particular uh, updates all the time. There's always new features coming out. Um, and some things that were an issue, say, three years ago with our first customer are no longer issues now um, or, or less of an issue. So some examples being um, VPN compatibility used to be a little bit of a pain three years ago. Um, you need an IPsec VPN or uh, Express Route or something like that to connect you up from your production site to your DR site. Um, you know, if it was Azure, then... Um, you're limited, well, you used to be limited with what protocols you could use for your VPNs, which made getting some firewalls to work um, a bit of a pain. Nowadays, you've got much more uh, choice of what, what um, protocols you want to use. It's much easier to set up these VPNs. Another thing I mentioned was the limit is eight terabytes for data disks. Um, that's only been around for about six months to a year. It used to be only four terabytes, which was a bit more of an issue. Um, so that's now less of an issue with it being much larger disks. Um, there's much more features coming out in Azure all the time, like the Azure Firewall for added security, and you get much more third-party support now than you did a few years ago. So there's, um, you know, firewall appliances and things like that, Citrix NetScalers we can deploy, which I'll touch on as well in a minute. But it's it's much more um, of a solid foundation now than it was a few years ago, and it's growing very, very fast. So if it's if, even if you have a caveat now, it might not be a caveat in the near future as well. Uh, so another thing we've learned is, um, is the connectivity considerations you want to think about. So Zerto, as Chris has mentioned, is an excellent tool at getting your virtual machines into Azure. It will get them there with very low RPOs, very, very quick RTOs. You've got all these virtual machines now up and running in Azure, and how are you going to connect to them? Now, every customer is different with their remote working solution. Um, some people use remote desktop and RDE web. Now, Zerto will fail over your Windows RDE web servers and remote desktop servers, no problem. Uh, it might not work well with perhaps um, some if you have physical load balances or things like that. But in Azure, we can deploy load balances and, and help um, get that solution matched up with your on-premise on solution. Get yeah, that working quite easily. SSL VPNs are another very common one for our customers. There's lots of options in Azure for that with OpenVPN and Azure's virtual network gateways have their own VPN solutions. And some customers even use uh, always-on VPNs like RAS. Um, now, technically, these aren't supported by Microsoft in Azure, despite it being a Microsoft um, solution. However, we can get, we have worked with customers to get those working, and it's simply then a public IP change from your on-premise RS server to when it spins up in Azure. So that works very well as well. Uh, IPsec VPNs, again, these are very easy to configure nowadays, as well as express routes. So if the customer was to have multiple sites, for example, and one of those sites was to go down and it was protected to public cloud with Zerto, we would fail over those virtual machines and then connect that set of virtual machines up to their other sites with an IPsec VPN that can be pre-configured. So that's another simple thing to do. Um, Citrix as well, we have a lot of customers using Citrix. Now we can fail over the virtual machines that manage Citrix, such as the storefront and the delivery controllers. Um, however, you can't replicate the NetScalers because the 
the VMware Netscalers just don't work in Azure. What we can do is work with the customers to deploy a Netscaler appliance of the same version and then configure it to talk to the virtual machines like the storefront and the delivery controllers when they fail over and then we have it shut down until it's needed. So that's another solution that can be um, configured well and work well in Azure. We are also seeing some customers start to use VMware Horizon View and Windows Virtual Desktop now is a great solution for having Windows 10 virtual desktops and Windows 7 as well uh, in Azure. So why are we seeing more of an adoption to public cloud over the older alternatives or the, what was more common a few years ago? So primarily the, the old way of doing it would be DR to a second data center. So you can use VMware Site Recovery Manager or even Zerto to go from your VMware environment to a second VMware environment or from Hyper-V to Hyper-V or, or whatever you've got. And you would get very fast recovery times and very low RTOs. However, as, as you know, maintaining two data centers is very expensive. Uh, more maintenance as well, more licensing costs, all that sort of thing. Um, and you probably won't get as much choice around geographical diversity as you do with, with public cloud or private cloud. Um, so mainly it's very expensive. The DR to private cloud as well would be um, the next sort of best option. So like Data Barracks, we have a, a bunker down in Kent, which we have a, a data center in. Obviously much less expensive than having your own uh, own that second data center. Uh, a little bit slower, but with Zerto, you're still going to get seconds in the RPOs and, and, and minutes within the, the RTOs. Um, so it should be fast enough to meet the majority of customers' needs, and you get pretty much like for like. However, we are seeing a bigger adoption of public cloud for a few reasons. Storage has become a lot cheaper over the last few years in public cloud. It's much more flexible with your data center locations. So there's, there's, there's multiple data centers in UK alone, and then there's obviously Europe and the rest of the world. Microsoft have lots of uh, data centers. You get similar sort of speeds, if not the same as the private cloud, same seconds in RPOs, very fast RTOs. Um, you know, a domain controller, for example, will fail over and, and be built online within Azure within about four minutes, maybe less and a big file server, maybe 20 minutes. So the actual real-time RTOs are there and they're, and they're pretty quick. Now, there are some caveats with public cloud, as I've, as I've mentioned previously, but these caveats are slowly going away um, and it's slowly becoming much easier for us as a service provider to provide disaster recovery as a service to public cloud. Um, and finally, public cloud is being adopted more because it's the first step towards a cloud migration. Cloud migration is on your roadmap and then having your disaster recovery all the um, configured to go to public cloud, you can test this and, and, and make sure you're comfortable with what public cloud offers prior to actually doing any migration. Um, if your hardware is coming up for a refresh, again, you might not want to have that vexed expenditure of buying another, another load of hardware and licensing and things like that. Um, so you might want to migrate to public cloud. If you have your disaster recovery solution already configured there, again, you can test this to your heart's content. With Zerto, you can test into isolated networks and not affect your production site whilst you're doing these tests. So you can be very comfortable with the fact that it's going to be a working solution for you prior to migrating. Um, you can also do phased migrations. So you can have um, a public cloud tenant connected back to your production site and you can move some of your services one at a time um, until you're fully up there. Uh, that's what Data Barracks actually as a business did. We had our office um, systems running on a small VMware environment in London and we've gradually migrated those services uh, over a period of time quite comfortably using Zerto as a tool into Azure and now we're 99% running public cloud and once you're in public cloud you're going to want disaster recovery as well. Um, there are a lot of redundant, uh, redundancy features in, in Azure as well as AWS however you know data centers do go down sometimes and have issues. There's been a couple with Azure in the last few months. So you might want to have your disaster recovery solution up there as well. We have ours being protected from UK West to UK South and we use Zerto to do it. And there are other tools that you can, you can use, but Zerto is the best one on the market. So, so we use that ourselves as well as recommending it for our customers. Um, so that's why mainly over the last few years, we've seen a big uptake in in public cloud um, disaster recovery and almost all of our new customers are now looking at public cloud for their disaster recovery. So thank you for your time. If you want to find out anything more about DR to public cloud you can find our contact details on our website and now back to James for some questions. 
Hi uh, guys, thank you so much. So we we've probably got time for just uh, just one question. I think we've we've run a little bit long. I think as you can tell, we were probably ambitious with how much uh, of the content we wanted to try and squeeze into 30 minutes to give that that overview. Before uh, I jump to those questions, I'm very quickly going to do the prize draw. So I don't know if you can hear. This is a uh, our, our <laughs> uh, slightly old-fashioned method of, uh, of bits of paper in a in a cup. Uh, so the winner is uh, pushback. Uh, Nayak, uh, pushback. I'll uh, I will drop you a line, and we can get that in the post to you shortly. Uh, so congratulations for your win. Um, and then the uh, I guess the, the the one question I'm going to uh, to to use here, I'll I'll throw it to you, Steve, because I think this is probably the um, the one that's most useful for everyone. So is there a rule of thumb for estimating bandwidth requirement? Yeah, so historically, um, we've gone with two megabytes per server and five megabytes for management. Zerto needs to talk to itself across the uh, IPsec VPN for management traffic and, and then two megabytes per server. However, an SQL server is going to be 10 times more in terms of throughput than a domain controller, for example. So whilst it's a rule of thumb, it's not as accurate as we would like it to be. But the, the Azure Deployment Planner, and as Chris mentioned, the Zerto Planner, which we run for all of our customers prior to any disaster recovery project, will give us a much more accurate uh, representation of how much bandwidth each server is going to use because um, we run them for a period of time and they monitor the sort of data rate of change on the virtual machines and that's how we get a much more accurate number on, on what we would expect for bandwidth requirements. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so we do have some other questions. I, one of the things I'm always really keen is that we do uh, kind of keep keep as close as we possibly can to the to the time that we put in. So uh, I'm going to draw this to an end now. But we we have other questions on on bandwidth uh, in particular. So I'll I'll make sure that we we reply to everyone individually. Um, lastly, let's say thanks to to Chris and Steve for um, for presenting for us today. Thank you to everyone for joining us, uh, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on the on the next session. Thank you, everybody.